WWDC just happened, Apple revealed a bunch of software for all of their product lines, so let's go over them. They started off the presentation talking about Apple Intelligence, the elephant in the room. So the more intelligent, more personal Siri is still coming in the coming year. That's something, I guess. And it really set the expectations for the rest of the presentation to be less focused on AI. And AI is kind of just like sprinkled throughout all of the software and less of a focus for this presentation. And they also introduced their new design language, which we heard about in the rumors. So they're calling this the new liquid glass design language, which is the first major redesign we've had to the iPhone since iOS 7. And this is going to be applying across the board on all of their products. So the Mac, the iPhone, the iPad, Apple Watch, um, Vision OS. I mean, technically Vision OS is what this whole design change is inspired by, but it's coming to all the platforms, so all the devices have a more seamless look, I guess, which is pretty neat. Also, all of the software names have been updated to be 26 because the software will be released in the end of 2025 and will be mostly used in 2026. Although Mac OS, on top of the 26 naming, will also be getting a place name as per tradition. Last year it was Mac OS Sequoia, now it is Mac OS Tahoe. So first off, iOS, we're getting a visual update to all of the apps. So that means new and refined icons and that glass look all over the OS. I don't like the new camera app. It's kind of a jarring difference compared to the old camera app icon of iOS 18 and before, but I guess it matches closer to the iOS 6 and before camera app. The phone app got updates to the app layout and there's also a really nifty call hold feature. So basically, let's say you call someone and they put you on hold, right? And you hear the hold music, the iPhone can detect that hold music and be like, hey, I can watch this call for you and uh, you can put the call aside for now. And the iPhone will actually ring your phone when it detects that the hold is over and then there's someone on the other end of the phone waiting for you. So it'll give you a ring, this way you don't have to worry about staying on the line the whole time. You can just kind of throw the call off to the side, do your own little thing, and then the iPhone will ring you when it's ready. Android phones have had it for a while now, but it's cool to see Apple catching up as well. We also got a bunch of live translation stuff. So let's say you're on a FaceTime call with your like grandma who speaks another language. What she says will be translated to you and then what you say will be translated to her. So both of you can understand each other and it's like some sort of live translation thing. There's also changes to the iPhone's lock screen. The clock can dynamically adjust to what wallpaper you have. And there's also a feature where the phone will take your wallpaper and kind of make like a 3D effect, which is kind of reminding me of perspective zoom from back in the old days. There's also some updates to visual intelligence. You can screenshot anything on your screen and then you can ask ChatGPT and do a bunch of visual intelligence stuff with it. It's basically Apple's response to like circle to search, which has been on Android phones for like a couple years now. The messages app also got a bunch of updates. You have polls backgrounds, typing indicators, some small refinements to the messaging experience on iMessage or well, I guess a messages app. And again, we've seen these on like Instagram and other like social messaging platforms, but it's cool to see Apple bring it to the messages app. There's also enhancements to Apple CarPlay, Apple Music, Apple Wallet, Apple Maps. The new Apple Maps update will actually have your iPhone learn your preferred routes and it can notify you if that route isn't available, like if there's like road closures or anything. And there's also a feature called visited places, which basically just keeps track of all the places you've been to. There's a new app called Games, which basically is like Game Center and you can like compete with your friends and stuff on mobile games. One last thing, it looks like the rumored estimated time to charge feature is coming to the iPhone. So that's really awesome. WatchOS also got a couple improvements. There's a new AI workout buddy, which I'm gonna be honest, I'm probably gonna turn off when I update my watch, but it's useful if you want the feeling of like having a coach right on your wrist. The smart stack will offer hints based on what it thinks you might want. And the notes app is also coming to WatchOS. Finally, so the notes you write on your iPhone, the notes you write on your iPad, Mac, whatever, those are gonna be accessible on your wrist. And you can now flick your wrist to dismiss notifications and silence calls. Apple's liquid glass design also comes with tvOS and visionOS gets a couple new features as well. It now allows you to put widgets in your surrounding area so you can have like a clock widget on your wall or maybe like a photo of like a nice beach or something. As for macOS, there's a couple shortcuts app improvements. You can use Apple intelligence in your shortcuts now. And macOS has gotten the same visual revamp that all the other softwares are getting. You can tint the icons now by the looks of it, have transparent widgets. It looks really clean, really nice. The menu bar is now transparent and it can show the live activities that you have on your iPhone. So let's say I'm a big Mac, I ordered some Uber, the live activity is on my iPhone, it shows off how much time is remaining. But let's say I don't wanna go look at my iPhone, let's say I'm on my Mac, right? So then I can actually see how much time is left on the Uber just in my menu bar, which is really neat. The phone app also comes to Mac OS, so you can look at your calls right on your Mac. And Apple has finally introduced clipboard history, so you can look at the stuff you've copied and pasted in the past and use it to your will. Spotlight Search also got a really big upgrade. It's a lot more powerful. It kind of reminds me of the Windows Start menu, but you can access a lot more stuff using Spotlight Search. You can even write and send a whole email just within the Spotlight Search bar, which I think is kind of cool, but I don't know how useful that will be. Like I prefer 
writing out my emails in an actual email composer, but it might be useful if you wanted to send a quick message to your coworker. The Apple Games app also comes to Mac OS, and you can now change the color of your folders and add emojis to them in the Finder in Mac OS. Truly groundbreaking stuff. Now for iPad OS. Right off the bat, biggest news, finally, after how many years of the iPad, we have proper window management. So you can now put apps wherever you want on your iPad screen, whereas before you had the split view, which only had two or three apps on the screen at a time. And in 2022, Apple introduced Stage Manager, which was kind of like the floating windows you have on Mac OS and like Windows, but it was still kind of restricted in the way that it like kind of snapped your windows even when you were like moving them around. You didn't have the ability to fully freely move your windows wherever you wanted. And it was also locked down to the iPad Pros and the iPad Airs, the newer ones with the more powerful chips. But this new window management system is now available on every single iPad that supports iPad OS 26. And it's honestly a pretty generous list because it goes all the way back to like the iPad mini 5 and the iPad Air 3, which were released back in 2019. That's six years ago, it's pretty crazy. Those iPads will be seven years old in 2026 and they'll still have the brand new software from Apple. But yeah, it's interesting how Stage Manager only supported a uh, select few iPads, but now Stage Manager and the new floating windows are available on all iPads that run iPad OS 26. There's also a Mac OS like there's also, there's, ugh, there's also now a Mac OS like menu bar on the iPad, which is really awesome. And the cursor, which used to be a circle, is now just a cursor, which is really cool. It's a pointy pointer. A pointier pointer and a menu bar? Who would have thought? You also get background tasks. So before on the iPad, if you wanted to export a video, you'd have to keep that export on your screen. But no, now you can export a video on your iPad and then just keep doing whatever you want to do on your iPad and it'll continue exporting in the background like a computer. You can also now put folders in the dock. I love this feature on the Mac. I'm really glad it's coming to iPad. The preview app is also coming to the iPad. If you're a Mac user, you'll recognize the preview app as a place where you open like photos and files and PDFs and stuff. You can annotate and sign them, type in them. That's coming to the iPad, which I think is really great because the Apple Pencil is a great tool for like annotating PDFs and stuff. So preview app is gonna make that really handy. And like on the Mac and the iPhone, the phone app also comes to the iPad and same with the live translation stuff. And of course the overall visual redesign with liquid glass. And then there's just a bunch of small refinements to the iPad to make it feel more like a computer. Like the files app is getting some improvements. You have the ability to manually change the audio input. So for me, that's really useful, right? Because there's the iPad's default microphone, but then I also have my Blue Yeti, which I don't know if you can see right now, but right here, I have this plugged into my iPad right now. And the iPad right now, it automatically detects that I have the Blue Yeti plugged in and it's just using the Blue Yeti microphone automatically. But this new update is gonna be really awesome because it'll manually give me control of what input device I wanna use. If I wanna use the default iPad microphone or if I wanna use the Blue Yeti microphone, it gives me that choice. So that's some of the biggest stuff that Apple showcased at WWDC today. Let us know in the comments below what feature you're looking forward to most. Thanks for watching, be awesome and stay techy. Bye. So my iOS 26, it's so weird to say, iOS 26 on my iPhone SE 2020. Wow, look at that aqua design. Just finished recording and look at that. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Look at all those icons. Wow. Oh, that dark mode is clean.